This shows step-by-step -step instructions for installation, management, and maintenance of the Pure Air Outdoor Sampling Station. Here is the complete setup of the station. It includes filter station, a nephilometer, and a MET1 monitor. We have also provided other accessories including a solar panel and a UPS battery. You will receive a large box containing all the monitors and accessories. This is the filter station, made up of a control box and an inlet box. Here is the nephilometer, the MET1, a UPS battery, and a solar panel. It is important to first make sure you have received all parts and accessories. Contact me immediately if you are missing any of the items shown here. You will need a metal pole about this size, which needs to be secured on a flat rooftop to mount the samplers on. Use the hose clamps and the power tool provided to mount the control box. Secure the box to the pre-assembled pole using the metal bars attached to the back of the cases. It should be secured tightly and stable enough to avoid vibration and shifting after installation. It should also be able to withstand extreme weather events. The control box should be about one meter above the rooftop floor. Next is the inlet box. Position and mount the inlet box at about one meter above the control box. To install the nephilometer, you need longer hose clamps. Join two smaller hose clamps to make it longer. Secure the nephilometer at both ends over the tape at the base. The nephilometer should be placed between the filter control and inlet boxes. Finally, install the MET1 monitor to the top of the metal pole above the inlet box. Again, use hose clamps to fasten the MET1 monitor to the pole. When you are done securing it, insert the cyclone inlet into the slot located at the top of the monitor. For the filter station, first connect the filter inlet to the control box using the tubing labeled 1 to 8. The tubing and their corresponding ports are both clearly marked. If you need to unplug any of the tubing after installation, just push down on the side and then pull out. Check to make sure everything is well placed and secured. Next, connect the pump to the control box. Where to connect the pump is clearly labeled. The pump is located at the base of the control box. Be sure this is well tight. The nephilometer should be connected to the 12 volt power coming from the control box. The control box itself must be connected to the AC output port on the UPS battery. The UPS battery must be connected to the voltage transformer, which is in turn connected to multi-socket extension cord coming from the wall. The cartridge to be inserted in the inlet box contains eight filters. The first seven filters will be sampled. The last one is a field blank. Each of the seven sample filters is programmed to actively sample for a total of 24 hours over a nine day period. We will program the station to start at nine local time on a duty cycle. Before you install a new cartridge, you must clean the impactor plates. Open the base of the inlet box to expose the impactor plates for cleaning and oiling. You also need to put some mineral oil on all eight impactor plates. There are gaskets, sampling log sheet, and two memory cards in the cartridge box. Check that the number on the cartridge box matches the number on the log sheet. Place the two gaskets correctly on either side of the cartridge.
Next, open the top of the inlet box and release the red clamps inside. Place the cartridge in the slot with the metal bolts facing upward. Make sure that the gaskets on either side of the cartridge are well placed and not impeding airflow. Secure the cartridge into place by pushing down tightly the two red clamps. Close the box when you are done. We will now measure the flow rate passing through each filter and record the information on the log sheet. But before that, insert one of the memory cards into the slot on the control box. This memory card is only for the cartridge you've just installed. Remember, you have a backup memory card already in place inside the control box. Never ever remove the backup memory card. Now, have your flow meter, log sheet, and pen ready. Turn on the control box, wait for it to load up system and sampling parameters. Wait until the screen says menu. Measure the start flows by going through the following steps. Select menu. The screen should say sampling settings. Select next. Under functional tests, select go. Under valve test, select go again. It should show valve, flow, and vacuum values. Select vacuum. We need to record two flow readings for each filter. The one on the control box screen is called internal flow. The other on the flow meter is the external flow. This is important. Connect your flow meter to valve one. Adjust the external flow on the flow meter as close as possible to four liters per minute using the flow control knob. This must be done for valve one only. Record both external flow and internal flow on the log sheet. Use next and repeat the same steps to go through the next six valves, valves two through seven. Do not adjust flows for any of the other six remaining valves. Manual flow adjustment is allowed for valve one only when measuring the start flow for filter one only. Simply read the reported flow values for the other six filters, valves two through seven, and record on the log sheet. Note, when you're done with valve seven, select exit and the word purging will appear. Select exit again. Then select back under valve test, follow by exit under utilities. The screen will now say finished. Now we're ready to program the filter station to start sampling. Note, the system and sampling settings including date and time have been pre-programmed to local date and time prior to shipment. Under finished, select new tray. Under replace memory card, select done. It will prompt you for tray ID. Change the tray ID using the plus or minus to select the tray ID that matches the log sheet. Hit next. It will display the tray ID you've just selected. Select save. Select start. Under stopped tube, select start. Under choose mode, select auto. We'll ask to use program start times, select yes. The screen will display start time missed and ask start now or wait. Select wait. After this, you will see the countdown to the start time. Now close the filter control box. The Nephilometer and MET1 do not need much work. Just connect them to power and they will start sampling immediately. They are programmed to run automatically. For the Nephilometer, first open the gray cover. Insert one of the memory cards and make sure it is well secured. Flip the power button to on position. When power comes on, the Nephilometer will immediately begin to sample. Check to see that both power and data lights are on. Remember to connect the MET1 to the 12 volt DC output from the UPS battery. 
When power comes on, the MET-1 will immediately begin to sample and stream data live via satellite. To provide an uninterrupted power supply to the instruments, we have also provided a solar panel to charge the UPS, in addition to power from the grid. The charge controller has two cables, one going out to the solar panel and the other going out to the UPS battery. One final thing to note is that we will keep all electrical systems and loose wires and cords secured in the box provided to shield them from the weather. Connect the solar panel to the input terminals of the charge controller, then connect the charge controller output to the UPS battery. Now the installation of the system is complete. 